Good morning, my name is Jim Carroll from Whirlpool. I'd like to thank Modelon for putting this event together and asking me, giving me the opportunity to speak today. I want to talk about model deployment. At Whirlpool, what we're doing in terms of model reuse, um, taking compiled models and using them for other purposes. So continuing in the same kind of spirit with the strength of Medellic in terms of uh, modularity and model reuse, looking at different ways different types of users can take advantage of the models that we develop. So <clears throat> the presentation is about model deployment. It's not ex specifically about FMI. I'll show examples of where we're using FMI today and other examples where we're not yet using FMI. But there's some applications there that would lend themselves to be um, better served probably to using FMI in the future. So um, you, could, you can think of them in that way or also in another way uh, is a view to see why it's important to have a standard like FMI so that uh, those approaches can become more powerful. So I'd like to talk about model deployment and use, the link between different tools, some applications for DOEs, um, batch simulation and optimization, um, custom applications. So this would be a developing tools that are catered specifically to a specific type of engineering study. And then also a general, general simulator framework for reusing models. <clears throat> so in terms of the use case for models, there's a few different of tiers, I think, of users. Um, Medellica model developers I would put into the kind of the advanced model development box here, um, working on developing models, uh, working on developing libraries to implement different physics. The intermediate users may be trained in Medellica, they may be able to use the, the tools that the vendors are putting together to uh, interchange components and look at different system topologies, but they're probably not implementing new models or new physics. And then the other type of user is a basic user, and this is a place where we're trying to grow the model use. So this is someone that's not familiar with Medellica or developing models. They don't really care about Medellica or developing models. They want to answer an engineering question in a simple way, in a, in a quick way. Um, so th this basic use case is where I'll, I'll talk mostly today um, that I think is strongly enabled by FMI. Looking at the tool linkage, batch simulation, optimization, and leading to some GUI type applications. <clears throat> Oops. So the first, the first application I'll show here is a tool linkage. So this is something that we would have been formerly doing with an S function um, from Simulink. So taking a, a, a physical system model and being able to embed it with a control simulation for controls development. So today, we're able to do this in a bi-directional way. So if we're working on developing the physical system model, we, need a, we still need a control model to, to work on understanding how our system is going to behave and how to better optimize the system. The controls engineer wants access to the physical model. So they would like to take the physical model into their tool, into their environment, and work on optimizing the control system. And these things are usually, they're not usually done like in a, in a serial way where the physical system is completely finished and optimized and then we would hand it over and give it to the controls engineers to develop a controls model. Usually this is a back and forth and so this type of tool linkage facilitates that, that type of working. Um, so here there's an example of showing the control FMU that was taken from Simulink and brought into a Medellic environment coupled with an appliance model. Uh, the other point I should say, if you, if you talk about the, the co-simulation where you're able to then also embed the solver, this becomes important because some other tools that you might uh, export a model to, for example, using an S function, the integrators may not be robust enough to actually solve the, the physical system of equations that you need to solve. And so we've seen examples of this in refrigeration systems or heat pumps, for example, where uh, the systems are highly nonlinear and the the Medellica type tools are having much more robust integrators and are able to, uh, to solve the system more effectively. <clears throat> Another application, um, in this case not using FMI yet, but I think you'll, you'll see some input from the tool vendors about a similar type of approach. Um, Excel is something that all the, every engineer has access to and familiarity and so there's some basic optimization capabilities there. Um, it lends itself very well for doing something like batch simulation where you can create a parameter table or a table for a, a design of experiments 
and execute <clears throat> a number of simulations in kind of a multi-sim type of way. Um, so performing a simulation with some number of input parameters and then pulling back the results. Uh, so one of my colleagues, Prasad Shep, put together an Excel interface for doing this kind of thing right now. It's based on a proprietary standard. It's an, an opportunity for us to, to uh, move to using FMI so that the tool can couple uh, to other types of simulations. <clears throat> the other type of application um, for tool linkage is with optimization. So some of my colleagues are over here in this part of the state also today attending a a Mode Frontier users group. Uh, Mode Frontier is something that we've been using to do both design optimization and also act as a, as a tool or a conductor for connecting different types of simulations together. So this is an example of taking a compiled model and it's, it's a simple graphical workflow for doing an optimization where we would be bringing in at the top here some optimization parameters like a temperature set point in, in two different places, two different sensors and then trying to optimize some competing requirements like time and energy consumption. So up to now, this was done by a user working with a compiled model and working with input-output files, and so the setup can be somewhat tedious. Um, a step towards improving that is moving to something like uh, a Daimler node, which is something that we worked on with Esteco to develop. So before we were really moving to using FMI, one of the themes you'll see emerge, I think, in terms of model reuse for people that aren't model developers is model developer is comfortable um, looking through a big tree of all the variables in the model where they're intimately familiar with all of the variables and parameters in their models. A, a new user is not going to be that comfortable. So here there's a tool that facilitates doing model introspection. So this is looking at being able to browse through the different variables and uh, and parameters in the model to set up the input and output to the simulation. So in this case, it's not an FMU node. I think it would be more powerful if it was an FMU node because now Mode Frontier could be coupled directly to a, a wide range of different models. Um, a tool for a very specific application. This is um, courtesy of my colleague, Fernando Rivas. Uh, Fernando works on motors for washing machines. And he's been able to put together some very specific custom uh, GUIs for doing motor design and analysis, understanding energy consumption of motors and, and uh, the thermal behavior of motors in the system. And this is something that's being done using a C++ builder. So today this is being accomplished by interfacing directly with C code, uh, interfacing with, in some cases, existing spreadsheets through ActiveX. Um, and then interfacing to several different Medellica models, either by file transfer or by a compiled model. So this, again, is another opportunity for us to, to move towards using FMI. Um, and one of the challenges that I see for a, an approach like this is anytime the models change, then the GUI has to change. So we have to have someone like Fernando that's capable of, of putting together this application. I think it makes sense in some really specific cases. Um, there's more general cases, though, for, for other types of users. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about the Pi Simulator. Um, this was discussed in the 7th Mod Prod workshop, and it was developed by DLR. It's a Python program, which is a, an interface, a general interface to um, compiled Medellica models. And you can use it for running FMUs, for managing simulation results, for doing plotting. Uh, it's open source. It's distributed as of now. A version 1.9 of Open Medellica comes with the Pi Simulator, and also an interface to the Pi Simulator. And it's it's a user friendly and simple tool to use. Uh, in my interest in looking at, at extending the Pi Simulator, um, I'll talk about the framework of the Pi Simulator briefly. Um, there's plugins here which you can see support the uh, FMU and other type of compiled simulations and also plugins that you can write to do different types of uh, results analysis. Um, from the user standpoint, there's kind of this advanced mode use, which I think is the, the typical model tree that you would, you would expect to see in a Medellica-based tool. Um, and what we've done is work to extend this in, in terms of developing oh, what's called a simple mode. And the simple mode is something where we can 
Uh, well, first I'll go through the, the advanced kind of mode uses just to give you a visual. So here you can see the FMU is supported. Uh, basically, you can just browse to an FMU and load it. You can see the model tree. You can simulate the model and, and choose a, an integrator. So this should be very familiar with, for people that are used to looking at Medelica tools. So this is kind of the advanced mode usage. This is kind of the out-of-the-box uh, behavior for the Pi simulator. Um, the opportunity, as I said before, for simpler users as model complexity grows, an example for the dryer, um, a flow circuit may have a few hundred equations, a dryer thermodynamic model might have up to a thousand equations, and something like a heat pump dryer where we bring a refrigeration system in, we have something on the order of 10,000 equations, and so it's difficult to expect a, a user to uh, browse through a tree and navigate through a spreadsheet, for example, with that many uh, model parameters and variables. And as I mentioned before, the GUI needs to change and be updated each time the model changes. So taking some inspiration from this um, work that was presented in the Medelica conference about automatic generation of user interfaces, <clears throat> we did some work to extend the uh, use of the Pi simulator, creating a, a capability in this advanced mode to do some pre-configuration. So here, you, here we would be basically limiting the model tree to a certain number of parameters that, that we expect the user would be wanting to interact with. Limiting also the output variable tree um, to those measurements, variables, and metrics that the user would be interested in, and also doing some plot pre-configuration. And so this is a, a quick view of the pre-configuration, so basically just selecting from either the parameter or the variable tree, and doing also some plot, sim plot configuration by running a simulation creating some plots and saving a configuration file. So what this enables then is a mode of using the tool in a simple mode where the user is presented with a subset of this tree. There's a tabbed GUI that's generated here that shows the parameter, um, the description of the parameter and the units, which is, I think, somewhat more straightforward than browsing through a tree. And then you can see here that there were some outputs that were automatically loaded. So. Uh, this is something that we're working on with some freelance programmers uh, in, in looking to contribute back to the, to the Pi simulator. So just to uh, wrap up, uh, as I said, I think FMU, FMI strongly enables model deployment. I think it's important that there's a standard that, that'll let us, in our cases, evolve our applications towards using a standard and make them more powerful. And as more vendors and tools and simulators become compliant with FMI, then the tool set, the capability of the tool set continues to grow really without very much extra effort. Um, as, we're, as we're using FMI today, it's primarily for model exchange um, with the exception of the case I talked about for uh, cases where we need to also embed the integrators there. Um, I think our FMI usage will evolve. As I said, we'll be working to replace these proprietary compiled models. It's going to take some time for, for those uh, cases that we've already developed. And then the linkage to this general simulation framework is, is expected for us to speed how we can share our models, um, redeploy our models, and get better reuse. And this is through the Pi Simulator framework that I talked about. And then lastly, Pi Simulator is open source, and if anyone's interested in contributing, I'm, uh, I, would be, I would be pleased to see that. I'm in touch with the original model developers from, from DLR and looking to contribute uh, the parts that we've developed up to now. So thank you.